Here we're going to look at two quick little problems involving radicals. So this first one is going to involve denesting cube roots and it's due to Ramanujan. And the second one has to do with a finite sum involving radicals. And this is adapted from a problem that I've seen on like a bunch of different problem solving type tests. Okay, so like I said, the first one is going to be denesting cube roots. So let's go ahead and look at it. So we'll go ahead and start on the left hand side of this equation. So I've got the cube root of 1 ninth minus the cube root of 2 ninths and then plus the cube root of 4 ninths. And for my tools, I want to use these like fairly standard properties of sums of cubes, difference of cubes, and a binomial cubed. So we'll use these kind of as needed. Starting with the first one, noticing that we can visualize this thing as uh, this portion right here, x squared minus xy plus y squared, if we look at it the right way. So notice that this is the same thing as the cube root of 1 third quantity squared minus the cube root of 1 third times the cube root of 2 thirds and then plus the cube root of 2 thirds quantity squared. Great. So what that allows us to do is to use this formula and the way that I'll use it is I'll take this red underline and rewrite it as x cubed plus y cubed over x plus y. So notice that means I can rewrite this thing as the cube root of 1 third cubed and then plus the cube root of 2 thirds cubed and this is all going to be over x times y and I should say here that x is cube root of a third and y is cube root of two thirds. So here we've got the cube root of one third plus the cube root of two thirds. Great. But now here we're cubing cube roots in the numerator so that actually works out nicely. Notice this whole thing right here is just one third. This whole thing right here is just two thirds. So that means that numerator adds up to one. And then furthermore, we can factor uh, three out of the denominator of each of these cube roots, just as long as we're careful to keep it in a cube root. So let's go ahead and do those two steps. So again, the numerator is just one. And then I'm going to factor a one over the cube root of three out of the denominator. Notice that's going to leave me one here plus the cube root of two. So let's go ahead and write that down. One plus cube root of two. Okay, now I can go ahead and flip this guy upstairs. So that gives me the cube root of three in the numerator and then in the denominator I have one plus the cube root of two. Now the next thing that I wanna do is insert a cube root and a cube into the denominator. So I'll do that kinda of as follows. So I'll take the cube root of this whole thing and then I'll also cube this whole thing. Now let's see what that gives us. <clears throat> so that's gonna give us the cube root of, now we have three in the numerator, we can just bring that inside of the cube root for the whole fraction. And now I have one plus the cube root of two cubed in the denominator. Fantastic, and now what I wanna do is multiply out this denominator using the binomial cubed formula. So notice that is going to give me, so I still have my cube root with my three in the numerator. So that's gonna give me one cubed, so that's just one, and then three times one squared times this guy right here. So that's gonna be plus three times the cube root of two. And then we have plus three times the cube root of two squared. And then finally plus the cube root of two cubed, but that's just plus two. So we have a plus two here, great. But now notice that we can take this one and this two and add them together to a three. So that gives us a three in the denominator, which we can factor out of each of these three terms and cancel it with the numerator. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's gonna give us the cube root of, now we have a one in the numerator because we've canceled out the three that we factor out. And then in the denominator, we have a one plus the cube root of two plus the cube root of two quantity squared. Good. But now notice that this guy right here, which I'll underline in blue, looks a lot like this term right here, which I'll also underline in blue, where x is equal to the cube root of two, and then y is equal to one. 
since I have one over this term, I can really think about moving this over to this side of the equation and then this back over to this side of the equation. So in other words, one over x squared plus xy plus y squared is going to be equal to x minus y over x cubed minus y cubed. So let's go ahead and write that down. So here we have the cube root of three and then we're gonna have x minus y in the numerator where let's just point out here that x is equal to the cube root of two and then y is equal to one. So we've got x minus y in the numerator so that's gonna be the cube root of two minus one in the numerator. And then in the denominator we have x cubed minus y cubed, but notice x cubed is two, minus y cubed is one, and two minus one is one. So we're actually done right here, and we have achieved the formula which was our goal. Okay, so I'll go ahead and clean this up and we're gonna look at one more problem. So I've seen a problem like this next problem a lot of different places, including some math contests. And the goal is to find this finite sum. So it's one over the square root of one plus the square root of two plus one over the square root of two plus the square root of three, and then all the way up to one over the square root of 2020 plus the square root of 2021. Okay, so let's go ahead and explore a little bit to see how we can figure this out. And I wanna notice that we can rewrite this using summation notation in the following way. So this is the sum k equals one to 2020 of one over root k plus root k plus one. Okay, great. Now, generally when we've got something like this with radicals in the denominator, it's pretty typical to rationalize the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that and see if it's helpful. And notice we can rationalize the denominator here by multiplying by root k minus root k plus one in the numerator and in the denominator. So there we've got it, good. So now let's see what that gives us. So that's gonna give us this sum as k goes from one to 2020, so now we have root k minus root k plus one in the numerator, and then in the denominator, because this is a difference of squares formula, we're going to have root k squared minus root k plus one squared, but that's exactly minus one. Good, so we have root k minus root k plus one over minus one, so we can go ahead and use that minus one to just to flip the direction of that subtraction. So now we have the sum k equals one to 2020, of root k plus one minus root k. But now that really screams that we've got some sort of telescoping series. And so let's notice that our sum now can be written as the sum from k equals one to 2020 of root k plus one minus root k but that's gonna be equal to, so let's notice that the first term is root two minus root one, and then let's notice that the second term is equal to um, plus root three minus root two, then the next term is equal to root four minus root three, and then all the way up to root 2021 minus root 2020. Great. And so let's notice that a bunch of stuff cancels here. This two cancels with this two. This three cancels with this three. This four is gonna cancel with something after it. This 2020 is gonna cancel with something before it. So it looks like we're going to have the following, root 2021 minus root one, but root one is just one. So it looks like we have root 2021 minus one. And actually we could guess some sort of general formula for this pretty easily and the guess would go like this. Let's say the, k, the sum k equals one to n of root k plus one minus root k is equal to root n plus one minus one. And let's just point out that this is just a different way of rewriting our original formulation of this which was one over root k plus root k plus one. So now, I mean, essentially we've done the problem up here. We landed at an answer, root 2021 minus one. But now what I wanna do is take this formula and prove it carefully with induction.
So on the last board, we essentially finished our goal, which was showing that this sum was equal to the square root of 2021 minus one, but it was a little hand wavy involving that telescoping series. So now what I wanna do is use that, which was essentially a guess on the last board and prove it carefully with induction. So in other words, we wanna prove that the sum from K equals one to N of one over root k plus root k plus one is equal to root n plus one minus one, and that's true for all natural numbers n. Okay, fantastic. So let's go ahead and prove this. Like I said, we'll do this by induction. And so now our base case will be the n equals one case. So let's see that. So notice that we can just go ahead and write this out. This is the sum k equals one to one of one over root k plus root k plus one, but that's equal to one over one plus root two. But now again, we can kind of use the same kind of thing that we did over here by rationalizing the denominator, multiplying by one minus root two over one minus root two. And we'll see that on the numerator, we have one minus root two. And then on the denominator, we're gonna have one minus two or negative one. And so that's going to give us root two minus one. So in other words, we have achieved the base case. Good. So now let's make our induction hypothesis. So let's go ahead and suppose this is true for n equals m and consider the m plus first case. So in other words, now we want to look at the sum from k equals one to m plus one of one over root k plus root k plus one. So now since we're using induction, we wanna use the fact that it's true for n equals m. In other words, we wanna use this induction hypothesis. So what I'll do is I'll split this sum into two pieces. One piece that is everything up to m, and then the second piece, which is the m plus one term. So notice that's gonna give me this sum, k equals one up to m of one over root k plus root k plus one. And then the m plus one term, well, that's just a single term, so I can just write that down. That's going to be one over root m plus one plus root m plus two. Great. Now I wanna do two things to this. I wanna use the induction hypothesis to rewrite this in the form that we've assumed it to be. And then I'll again rationalize the denominator in this term. So notice I can rationalize the denominator here by multiplying by root m plus one minus root m plus two in the top and the bottom. Okay, great. So now let's just go ahead and write that down. So by our induction hypothesis, this guy right here is going to be root m plus one minus one. So we have root m plus one minus one for this. Good. And then let's see what we get from here. So notice we're going to have plus, now we have root m minus root m plus two over but notice if we do a dis difference of squares on the denominator, just like we did up here, or just like we did over here, we'll see that we get negative one in the denominator. But now we can use that negative one to change the sign up here. So I can change this to a plus if I change that to a plus and that to a minus. But ha that has the effect of taking this m plus one and canceling with that m plus one. And then in the end, we have root m plus two minus one. So this is equal to root m plus two minus one. But that's exactly what we need to show to finish our induction argument and thus prove that this is true for all natural numbers n, including n equals 2020, which is uh, our case. Okay, so that's a good place to stop.